Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about Pick's Theorem. Now you may not have heard of Pick's Theorem before, but it's essentially a really nice way of working out the area of any polygon on, uh, on a plane which has integer vertices, integer points. And today I'm going to be firstly showing you what it is and then giving you a proof for it. Um, so yeah, let's dive right in. This is what uh, the theorem is. The area of T, where T is a polygon, is equal to IT plus BT over 2 minus 1, where IT is the number of interior points of T, and BT is the number of uh, points, the number of integer points of T on the boundary. Okay, so let me just give you an example. So suppose we have our XY plane, like so, and we draw on all the integers. So this is 1, 1, this is 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, and so on. This is 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. Okay, and you get the picture. And of course this would con continue on forever. And you can draw the negative ones as well. Okay, in fact I'll draw, draw one more row and co column. And it says if I have a polygon on this, uh, on this, which has vertices on these points, so for example, this one here, Oh, it's not making a nice sound. Um, if we call this polygon here T, to work out the area of T, we simply count up the number of interior points. So in this case, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then plus the number of points on the boundary divided by 2. Well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over T. And then subtract 1. So in this case, it would be 6 plus 3 minus 1, which is 10. Okay, so that's a really cool way of working out the area of this polygon without having to do anything fancy. You may think uh, I have to draw some triangles on here, or maybe some rectangles as well, and then work out each of these individually. Um, but no, you can actually use this formula, which is really nice. And in fact, there's a generalization of this formula, but I won't do that in this video, perhaps in a future one. Anyway, let me get to proving this formula and why it works. Okay, so I'm going to use a proof by induction. So firstly, I'm going to assume that this formula holds for P and Q, where P and Q are polygons, okay? So assume true, so this is sort of the assumptions assumption step, assume uh, true for P and Q, so these are two polygons, where P and Q are disjoint, oh, the interiors of P and Q are disjoint, Uh, but they share exactly one side. Um, share exactly one side. Okay, so let me draw an example. So if we have this as our polygon P, I'll make it very crazy looking. Okay, this, this is our polygon P. And then we have one for Q. Okay, so this is the one for Q. And of course, it has some integer points inside. And same for Q. Okay, you get the picture. Um, we're going to assume this formula holds for each of these things here. So in other words, uh, the area of P is equal to IP plus BP over 2 minus 1, and the same for area of Q is equal to IQ plus BQ all over 2 minus 1. Now I want to show it holds for P, uh, sorry, the, the polygon PQ when I com combine these together. So what is the area of PQ? Well, the area of PQ is nothing but the area of A, the, the area of P, sorry, plus the area of Q. Okay, and of course then I can plug these in here, but before I do that, I'm going to make some observations. Firstly, how many interior points are there in the polygon PQ? So what is IPQ? Well, notice that if a point is in the, in, in the interior of P, then it's certainly in the interior of PQ. And the same goes for Q. So if it's an interior point of P or an interior point of Q, then it's an interior point of PQ. So I get this. But also notice that these points here, so if I... So Remember, these are integer points, 
and I'm going to have some number of integer points on this line here where they connect. <clears throat> so let's suppose I've got C integer points here. Well now notice that C minus two of these, namely the middle ones, were boundary points before for Q, but now they are interior points for PQ. So I get an additional C minus two interior points um, for the polygon PQ. Now let's work out the boundary, the number of points on the boundary B PQ, and we get a similar thing. We get BP plus BQ, BQ sorry. <clears throat> but we've sort of done some double counting. Firstly, the C minus two points here, um, they are no longer boundary points, despite the fact that they were boundaries for both P and for Q. So I've got to take off two lots of C minus two, one for P and then one for Q. But then also notice that these end points here, they are boundary points, but I've double counted them because um, obviously this point will occur once in BP and will also occur, occur once in BQ. But of course, I've, that point only occurs once in PQ. So I've got to subtract another two to give us the number of boundary points on PQ. Okay, now... Uh, if I take this formula here, which I've got here, and divide it by 2, divide everything by 2, I get BPQ over 2 equals BP over 2 plus BQ over 2 minus C minus 2 minus 1. And now you can probably guess what I'm going to do. Uh, let's use APQ, use this thing here, what we had before in our assumption step, and shove it all together. So we get that the area of PQ is equal to AP plus AQ, which is equal to this. So that's, let me rewrite it as IP plus IQ plus BP over 2, plus BQ over 2, minus 2. Okay, IP plus IQ, using this formula here, is IPQ minus C minus 2. IPQ minus C minus 2. BP over 2 plus BQ over 2, using this formula here, is BQ, uh, BPQ over 2 plus C minus 2 plus 1. So, plus BPQ over 2. Uh, plus C minus 2, uh, plus 1. Then of course I've got this minus 2 from here. And this C minus C minus 2 and plus C minus 2 cancels very nicely. And I've got 1 minus 2 at the end, which is of course minus 1. And I'm, in, and I'm done, because I've shown that the area of PQ is equal to IPQ plus BPQ over 2, minus 1. So I've shown that if, it, if you have two polygons, P and Q, which, are, uh, which have... The disjoint interiors, but they share exactly one side. You can use this argument to show that when you compose them, it uh, also works. Uh, the formula also works. And that's sort of our assumption going to our inductive step. And any polygon can be triangulated, which basically means any polygon you take in the real uh, plane, in R squared, you can draw a bunch of triangles on it. Uh, so you can essentially do this by induction on each of the triangles, to show that it holds for any polygon. So what remains to show or to prove is that we can do it for triangles, i.e. Uh, the base case. So when we have a triangle, we can apply this formula. Now before I prove it's true for uh, triangles, let me just make one note of this, uh, this little thing that I've proved here. I showed if it works for P, and if it works for Q, then it works for PQ. But equally, I could have done something very similar and gone, if it works for PQ, and if it works for P, then it works for Q. By sort of subtracting and, and sort of working backwards in this argument. So if it works for the whole shape here, and it all, if the formula holds for this whole shape here, and it also holds for Q, then it must also hold for P. Okay, and you can easily prove that yourself, uh, sort of just using this formula, but uh, working backwards. Um, but yeah, that will become important in just a second. So now all I need to do is show that it's true for triangles. So let's do that. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is verify that it's true for a square. So a very, very basic square which just has integer points. So it's just a unit square, like so. Okay, so let's call this square T. So what is the area of T? Well, it's just one, there's one unit there and one unit there. So the area of T is one, or one times one, which is one. And then, using our formula, let's see if it works. How many interior points are there? Well, there are none. So, IT plus BT over 2 minus 1 is equal to, well, there are no interior points. How many boundary points are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, plus 4 over 2. 
and then of course subtract 1. 4 over 2 is 2, minus 1 is 1. So it works for unit squares. Wonderful. Okay, and now using the argument we just had, the putting loads of polygons together, we can show that take any rectangle on the uh, on the plane which is has sides uh, parallel to the x y plane, uh, sorry the x y axes. This formula will also hold. So if you take any rectangle you want on the x y plane, which has sides parallel to the x y axis. So for example, this rectangle here, you can and obviously it has to have integer. Um, coordinates, you can draw a bunch of these unit squares on, and because of the argument I just had, um, this will uh, it holds for each of these squares, so inductively it will hold for the rectangle. Okay, cool, so it works for any rectangle which has sides um, parallel to the uh, uh, parallel to the x and y plane, x and y axis, sorry. Now what I'm going to do is show that it's also true for right angle triangles, um, and that follows quite well, also essentially immediately, so we have uh, any rectangle, it's true for a rectangle. Now if I split it like this, oh, sorry, that's supposed to be a straight line, I get two right angled triangles, and in fact any right angled triangle that has uh, both its sides that are next to the right angle, so these sides, parallel to the x and y axes, of course I can just reflect it across this line, and construct a rectangle. So I want to know, is it true for this right angle triangle here, or any right angle triangle which has uh, edges next to the right angle parallel to the x and y axis? Um, so what I'm firstly going to do is notice that the area of this triangle, which I'm going to call T, is the same as the area of this triangle here. And then by the argument I had before, the uh, formula, uh, the area of T is going to equal IT, oh, sorry, equal to it plus bt over 2 minus 1. This is definitely going to hold, and the reason for that is because we know it holds for rectangles, so if it didn't hold for the triangles, then when we compose them, it certainly wouldn't work for rectangles, but that would be a contradiction. So sort of a proof by contrapositive. Um, so we know that this formula, uh, Pick's theorem's formula, holds for right angle triangles where the sides next to the right angle are parallel to the x and y axes. Okay, cool, so we've proved it now for right angle triangles. Now let's take an arbitrary triangle, and we can show that it also holds for that triangle as well. So let's draw a random triangle in the plane which has integer vertices. So let's take this triangle here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, so I want to know the area of this thing here. So I'm just going to add on a bunch of right angle triangles. So I'm going to add on this one here. Okay. This one here. And then finally this one here. So right angle, right angle, right angle. Now this is, whole shape here is a rectangle. And these are right angles where the sides adjacent to the right angle are parallel to the x and y axes. So we, hope, we know we've proved it's true for rectangles, and we've also just proved it's true for right angle triangles. So it's true for this, true for this, true for this, and true for the whole rectangle. But by the argument I had before, where if it's true for PQ and it's true for Q, then it must be true for P, we can deduce that it's also true for this triangle here, i.e. Pick's theorem, this uh, formula here, holds for this triangle here. And essentially then we're done, we've proved the base case, and then any polygon you give in the xy plane can be triangulated, i.e. you can draw a bunch of triangles on it. So for example, if I have this polygon here, I can draw some triangles on like this, like this, maybe like this, like this. There's different ways to do it. Okay, and maybe like that. So I've drawn it as a bunch of triangles, and then using this argument, I know that this formula holds for each of these individual triangles, and then using the inductive argument I had before where you shove two polygons together, um, it also works for the composite shape as well. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, it's a neat little theorem. I don't think it's, it was ever taught to me. I stumbled across, across it recently, um, and I think it's uh, very useful, and it's quite a nice way of working out the area of a triangle uh, without having to actually do much measuring or uh, trying to get other shapes and things like that, uh, you just have to be able to count the spots 
inside the triangle and the number of spots on the boundary and then use this very simple formula here. If you have enjoyed this video and you are new here, please do consider subscribing. I make loads of other maths videos and I'm sure you'll enjoy them as well. And do like this video if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.